Okay, let's have a lesson on the Frog Galliard by John Dowland. This is Poulton, number 23. You might have this um, sheet music in another collection or a book. Um, it's one of Dowland's most popular works for, for solo lute. But if you don't, um, I have a sheet music edition, and there's a link for that in the description of the video. So for today's performance, I was using a capo on the third fret, and, and the sheet music is arranged for the third string tuned down to F sharp. So um, that puts us into relative loop tuning. So a tuning um, very similar to uh, what Dowling would have used on a lute, allowing us to play um, right from his original tablature if we wanted, although it's quite messy. <laughs> so I usually just read off the, the Poulton um, lute tablature. But like I said, I made a sheet music edition, so I am looking at the, the notation right now. So I'm going, there's a, if you follow the link to the sheet music, um, there's another video that I've included that talks all about why we might use a capo and how to tune down to the F sharp um, in case you're unfamiliar as to why we do that. But nevertheless, on this particular work, the F sharp is very, very important. Um, there's a number of, of chords where it ends up being an open string, so you don't have to fret that F sharp, so it's very, very handy. And the capo kind of raises the pitch level and gives it a very uniform sound. It also um, makes the scale length of the instrument much shorter, so some of the trickier chord shapes uh, might be a little bit easier with the capo. But because lots of students play um, without the capo for this piece, I'm just going to take it off for our lesson. Okay, so this piece is a great example of Elizabethan music, and even though it's not one of his large works, um, it's a wonderful um, solo work by Dowland. Essentially in this piece, it has a theme and a variation, and then a new theme and another variation. So from bar 1 all the way to 12 is, or all the way to 16, so one, bar 1 to 16 is your first theme, and then 17 to 32 is your variation on that theme, or figuration if you like, so using the same harmonies and chords and, and melodies, but using lots of figuration to make it more of a variation. And then at bar 33, you have this kind of new theme, um, which sounds suspiciously like green sleeves. And that goes all the way to bar 48, and that's your second theme. And then 49 to the end is the variation on that material. One thing that you can do whenever you have like a theme and a variation is to play them back to back so take just a small chunk, like take the first two bars and then take a look at the first bars of the variation. So that was bar 1 to 2 and then bar 17. You know, all those bass notes are the same. The bass line is exactly the same. All the harmonies are the same. So it's a real like variation on a theme. Same thing when at bar 33. If you go to bar 49, it's the same harmonies and bass notes. It's part of the reason why this piece has such a wonderful quality. You know, it has this very, it's a major key, but it almost sounds a little remorseful or sorrowful, sorrow, sorrowful. Um, it, when you have all this figuration, but you still have these long and calm bass notes that are, that are sustaining, the music feels really expansive and calm and almost dreamy, yet you are cycling through all these notes and 16th notes during the variations. So it gives it this real magical quality of being active, but also of being very expansive and sustained. So I think that is most of what I want to say. The only other thing is a little bit about phrasing, you know, ease in and out of your phrases in this piece. Especially when you get to the ends of phrases, like if I go from bar 7 or something. Uh, you know, just, just 
really ease off. Coming down soft, especially on that final note, or in the bigger cadence um, down at um, 15 and 16. You know, you just like you're you're really just coming to a close, and then starting again. So a little bit about phrasing. I'm um, also in the 16th note passages. I would do a little bit of strong weak alternation. So, you know, I obviously don't do it that much, but a little bit of that rhythmic um, um, accent on the micro level is is really nice in early music. Kind of connected to like the thumb and finger technique on the lute. So I think we'll just do a walkthrough now because there's not too much else to say about that. It's a theme and variations. We talked a little bit about phrasing. Um, it's just a wonderful um, piece. It's probably around the grade seven or eight level just because of some of the tricky chord shapes and the fast figuration at the end. But nevertheless, if you choose a slower tempo and um, there's lots of time to just go phrase by phrase and to relax through it. So it's not tricky in those ways, but like I said, a couple of tricky chord shapes to jump in and out of and some fast figuration near the end, which we'll talk about though. It's not as fast as you might first think. So when you play this opening chords, just play the melody on its own first. Play that little melodic line and play the bass line on its own just so you know it it's not super important but it's it's you know it's there and it's a it's it's so it's going to be sustaining through the whole piece so you want to know the bass line as well don't get caught just playing chords chunk 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 um, lots of horizontal thinking in terms of uh, voice leading right I do a hinge bar, so two, three, because we're sustaining with our fourth finger, and then let, let go of the bass, but keep it, your bar right down. If you're unfamiliar with hinge bars, I have a separate lesson on the lesson page, you can go check that out. of that material. So just remember when you're doing all this figuration, keep that bass line ringing because it's, it's the thing that will kind of make the piece feel calm even though you're playing really fast notes. much solution um, I go four four two it's two with the open string and whatnot it's tough to do a barre so four four two and then this beautiful triplet section playing even though we're in groups of threes for the triplets he kind of does this funny um, duple thing with the motif um, you know and there's a heniola just before that um, so always near the cadences there's sometimes this like rhythmic uh, displacement to kind of break it up and then relax on the cadence okay and then at 33 we have a new theme
not much to say about those chords. You just have to calmly move your hand from one shape to the next without making it sound stressful on the instrument. Um, it's not fast or anything like that, but it, it does, there's lots of on and off chord playing there. Um, all in this horizontal legato, right? So, second half of that, he pretty much returns to the original theme. To reach the cadence. And then the variation on that section. Yeah, the written fingering that I have for there, fourth finger. I think in the performance I used, I used my third finger there, which is fine too. But that fourth finger allows you to reach out a little bit more. And then at bar 57, we have some running 16th notes, which again is a variation on the previous theme, right? Now, I recommend that you practice this all with a metronome, like the whole piece pretty much, um, but especially this section with a metronome. Make sure you have it even and that you can handle the tempo that you've chosen. Um, but then, you know, you don't want it to sound super mechanical. Yeah, it sounds okay, but it's like, it's just too much like... Um, so you can add some micro phrasing in there. You know, I'm like, I'm easing into the beginning of each bar almost. Um, but like I said, you should really make sure that you, you can do it evenly with the metronome first, make sure it's all organized, and then you can like just really impart some musicality and some phrasing into it. It's not quite like um, romantic era rubato, but it's it's more just like a vocal phrasing of 16th notes where you wouldn't just like la 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 la, you know, like blast out, you know, notes, but instead you'd, you'd create little shapes out of them. And again, just remember you're trying to sustain those bass notes. There I do a pivot bar. Because we have to keep sustaining this bass note. So you just pivot into that bar and then... There's the hemiola again. Uh, you don't have to do that ornament. So it's like a lovely little piece. It's a perfect length and it, it's such a great little set of variations on, on these themes. So. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I think if you if you really listen to a lot of lute music and early and Elizabethan consort music, um, you'll get the the kind of magical feeling of it, and then you can try to try to do that on your guitar. <laughs>